Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Welcome to Love and Info, where's the best place for news, light, and inspiration. So how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing feeling great. Just I hope everybody's feeling great, and I hope everybody is aware that it's a sick fucking world out there. That sick shit happens all the time, and that anything that anyone's capable of doing, so we are. So are we. We're gonna talk about this little fucker, Ed Bucks. Mr. Ed Bucks, an LGBT political activist from West Hollywood, who has a dirty little fucking secret. This guy has a fetish of <clears throat> racial homicide by drug injection. Very specific and a lot more common than most people think. This guy finally was arrested. He's from Hollywood. He finally was arrested after two dead bodies of two black men had been found at his place over the last two years. The first one was his victim, was 26 years old. I saw his picture and it made me cry because it looked like somebody that I would date. It looked like somebody that I would find beautiful and attractive and that I would walk up to and try to start a conversation with. And just to know that that person doesn't exist, it really got to me. Uh, he was a 26 year old boy. Um, the second one was a 55 year old black man as well, Timothy Dunn. And the same thing, he will allure these people with money and drugs. There were obviously people who were probably in a situation or something and will overdose them and he will keep them there. And his whole thing was to do this racial fetish thing and to just keep them there sick until they will fucking die. And he will get away with it because money fucking talks. This man is fucking rich. And if there's one thing I need you guys to understand is that, first off, I wanna make a point of how he's, no matter what a leader, how his money has put him as a leader. We look at him as a gay fucking activist, the kind of people that represents us, the gay community. In the in the in the in the gay in the in the in the politics culture, you know. So that's one thing we have to look at and be totally aware of, of who these people are, you know. And I'm not sure how much this has to do with the whole Trump hate and people thinking it's okay to do this shit because sick bastards like this. I've dealt with them my whole life. I'm gonna tell you guys my experience closer to parallel to situations like this and some other ones that I know in a second. But just think about if this 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 guy has money. And the, 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 the us, when we are out there on, on meth and we're on drugs, we're very vulnerable. I mean, I was the kind of sick bitch that I was the master. I will advertise as an escort, as a master, so I would encounter a lot of the situations from the other role. But I would see a lot of kids, they would just be out there drugged, out of their mind, and they would just be like passed around, you know? But we'll get to that in a second. Let me tell you guys the facts. So he was arrested two days ago. They found the body two years ago. He didn't fucking go to jail. They found the body <clears throat> on January. He didn't fucking go to jail. Okay, I mean, he's a white, rich man. He's at the top of the Praetor list. He is the top of the Praetor list. He is at the top of the killers. He's at the top of the sharks. He's a white, rich man. Okay, the fact that he was gay had nothing to do with it, which is something that as a gay community, we can look at as like, are we gonna be proud that a, white, that a gay man may know it's just because he's fucking white and he's a male. He gets away with this shit. People like that get away with this shit. <clears throat> and that is the reality of it. The stir one survived. The stir guy last Sunday, he actually survived. He's been in his place for I don't know how many fucking days. This is all according to a CNN um, article, by the way. He had been in there for a couple of days and he got out of his fucking place. He had called 911 and he actually survived and got out of there. So they were able to fucking get this guy. I, apparently they've been trying to arrest him for the last 50 days. He was at a fucking rally speaking for LGBT rights when he got the text message that his house was being fucking raided because he was also running a fucking crack house at a shitty ass fucking place. He had a little crack house. And you know what's so fucking crazy? I know those apartments, those Laurel apartments where he was where he was at. And let me tell you guys something that happened to me years ago. It wasn't this guy, but it was like this buff guy. It was a super buff guy and he was like really handsome and he was like, yeah man, come over here, you know. I'm an escort, he hits me up. He's like, I'm gonna pay you for allegedly whatever we want to do. 
um, <clears throat> but he was paying me for my time. So I go over there and the guy is like super nervous and it's at this apartment, right? I walk in and it was to the left. And he's like super nervous and I'm like, are you like not trying to pay me? Like what's wrong with you, you know what I mean? And I don't remember what happened. The whole situation was sketchy. I wasn't scared because it was just supposed to be like a, you know, come in, fuck around, leave thing. It was no drugs involved. Um, but I was at those apartment complexes. It's just how parallel my world ran to this that is scary. Um, shit like this happens all the time. This guy used to be a model, you know, and, now he, and then he ran to try for console for West Hollywood back in 2007. Even the major or the console for actually West Hollywood made a statement to one of those reports where he said that he was surprised that he was very fucking aggressive. Like, he was like super anal. Like, this, I read in another report on, on, on Google that I Google, <clears throat> also by CNN, that this motherfucker, where he, when he was running for console, he used to walk around and get on people's thing about what they will feed their dogs because he would look at their shits. And he will go walk around starting trouble with this is how anal this guy was. So he's obviously violent, he's obviously anal, he obviously has some kind of po power trip, you know, and he's giving all this money, he's giving all these weak people, these weak victims. We need to take care of our community. We need to take care of each other. When we see each other out in the street, we, we can't ignore the gay community that goes through this. Let me tell you guys a story. A long time ago, <clears throat> I met, not a long time ago, a couple of years ago, I met this beautiful guy on Grindr. We, I was just passing by his city on a bus, so we'd never actually met in person, but we started talking and having long conversations, and he became my friend over the phone. He had told me that he had been part of a tra uh, sexual, uh, sexual trafficking, human trafficking case when he was like 14, 15, that he had been allured by this guy and to this by this guy around his age into this to this house and he described the house he was like it was a house at the top of a hill and it had a little room underneath it and the house was on top and it was white and this was in san francisco and that's where he was from and he said he was a lot allowed there and he was left there from this guy and when he woke up he had been on drugs for a couple of days his butt really really hurt he had been taken to the hospital and he was in the hospital for i guess weeks and they found out that he had this really strong strong hiv that had gotten into his blood and system and he had all this other stuff going on with him and ever since then he's been positive and he was kidnapped and he was abused for days and passed around and recorded and he was finding a case for a long time and um i mean knowing this story i put it on the side of my head and maybe a couple months after that I went up to San Francisco and <clears throat> I'm in San Francisco I'm in drugs myself escorting left and right you know whatnot and I meet this guy he goes uh, I meet this guy we're calling we're gonna call him peanut because that's what I met this guy and you know we met at a client and we we're both working the client and he goes let's go back to my house I'm like yeah you're fucking handsome why not we go back to his house and we're walking and the guy looks at me and he goes I you see the house up there and I look and I say yeah I see the house up there what's up and it was uh, it was a little it was a white house with a with a room underneath it and the big house on top and top of a hill I'm not putting two and two together yet if you guys are just wait <clears throat> And he goes, yeah, I used to live there with my boyfriend. And he killed himself. He killed himself and had to live in that house for two years in the same house where your boyfriend died. Ace and that fucked up, he goes. And when he was telling me this, like, you know when people tell you stuff, stories like that? Like, I'm a bit of a social bro, <laughs> just a little bit. It takes a lot for me to feel sorry for someone. But I do notice the pain on their voice when they talk about things. And when this man was talking about this, he didn't reflect much of anything. And um, I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, we're gonna go fuck, <laughs> you know? And then he's like, yeah, he was like, and I was, I was uh, under investigation for his, uh, for his murder for a long time, but it was, uh, it was actually, uh, no, 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 he didn't tell me this. He just said that he had, the boyfriend had killed himself and he had to live in the house for a while and he got the money and blah, blah, blah. So we go over to his house, <clears throat> you know, we have sex, whatnot, in the morning I leave. And then the man was just acting weird the whole night, saying things left and right, like everybody knows me, everybody knows who I am, I've been here left and right, blah, 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 blah. So I'm excited, you know, the next day I'm talking to my friend, who now going back to the friend that I met on Grinder, who I'm talking to often, who told me the story about what happened to him. And I'm like, hey man, I'm in your city, I'm in San Francisco. He doesn't live there anymore, he lives somewhere else. And I'm like, I'm in your city, like I met this fucking random dude yesterday, like you probably know him, this is his name. And he goes, holy shit, love, get out of there. He goes, if you're at his house, get the fuck up, whatever you did with him, probably saw you recorded, don't take any drugs, just leave. And I was like, I'm not there anymore, that was yesterday. <laughs> 
and it freaked me out so much that I actually canceled my reservations and went and took the bus back home um, because this was the guy that allowed him into this place where he got raped and put in for days where he got HIV when he was 16 years old but this guy is his age so this guy was his age back in the time and then I started realizing that this guy had been through court his whole fucking life because he was under investigation because his boyfriend got him into that it was a bigger case that people white people with money had and they were getting these fucking kids, this, this, kid, this color kids, to get other kids to come and do the same thing to them. And those that really had no one that gave a shit about them would be a part of this fucking thing. And they would just keep alluring other things. And it, it was like, what the fuck? This is the people, this is the people my age, this is my generation. <laughs> this is my community, this is my tribe, this is my family, this is what we go through. <clears throat> and the other hand, me as an escort, I will have a lot of the times clients that, now, this are requests that I will have from clients, whether I did this request and comply with them or not, that's between me and the fucking devil. Right now, I'm just telling you the stories about the request specifically that I will get from these people, not whether I did it or not. But these people, these guys will ask me, they said, and they will go as far as trying to notarize legal documents to try and talk me into this shit. They would want me to shoot me up a bunch of fucking math in my veins and, and force me to it. I want you to force me to it, act like a master, say you want me weakened on drugs, get in my head, take all my money, use me, take me to a hotel, bring other people to piss on me, bring other people to do this shit on me and, and just leave me there and take all my money. Some guys would be like, get my truck, get me naked in the back, push me out in the middle, I wanna be humiliated. And it's crazy stuff how the same people that want this to be done to them and they have enough money to get someone to get to do that for them, you can flip this and in two seconds, they have enough money to do it to somebody else. My ex-boyfriend, who I was escorting with at the time, he's a black boy, obviously. And he would tell me he actually had these clients who would never in my fucking life hit me up because I was a fucking master. But in reality, I was just a paid, another pay help, just like anybody else. Bottom line, they will hire him to do a whole humiliation thing where they will call him a nigger, where they will spin on him. These are white people, they own an underwear company in Palm Springs, okay? Yeah, the XL thing or whatever the fuck they're called or something like that. Let me not say names because I don't remember the exact brand, but they own an underwear, uh, you know, a thing in that loop thing. And, and, and this is what they do. They have enough money to do this. I had a motherfucker who had this like four bedroom mansion whose weekend house, he was like, I'm gonna leave a knife by the door and I want you to come in and put it to my fucking neck. It's a real world. It's a new world out there. People are just fucking dark. Be aware, we're all stars, okay? We're all dangerous, pretty little fucking stars. This is a song I'm gonna leave you guys with and then it's done. This is a song that basically describes a lot of the stuff that happens and how this changes their personalities and whatnot. But anyway, this is a song. <clears throat> Once again, this has no end I've always given a lift for sinning It feels so safe, my body knows I sell the anger, I save the tender And hide my soul, it's all I know the lies of living, nobody knows I've tried to blend in, but I've been tainted The scarlet letter, I saw my robes I can't let go It won't define me, it won't defeat me Won't steal my glory